Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras, and coming up in today's newscast, full private and public sector closures beginning tomorrow, following all-night ministerial meetings. The International Chabad Organization gets set to receive the Hollywood treatment with an all-new TV show. And the annual Jewish Day of Atonement approaches. Stay tuned for how to celebrate under lockdown. You thought we were under lockdown before? Well, just wait. We're just a week into nationwide closures in Israel, but infection rates are still skyrocketing. The Jewish state now comfortably claiming one of the worst infection rates per capita in the world. Israeli ministers then are now announcing an even more severe response to the coronavirus pandemic. מספר החולים הקשים עולה, לצערי גם מספר המתים. ביומיים האחרונים אנחנו שמענו מהמומחים שאם לא ננקוט צעדים מיידיים וקשים, אנחנו נגיע אל פי התהום. כדי להציל את החיים של אזרחי ישראל, נדרש מאיתנו עכשיו להטיל סגר מלא למשך שבועיים, מיום שישי הקרוב ועד מוצאי שמחת תורה. אחר כך נמשיך בשבועיים נוספים של סגר, אני מקווה עם פחות הגבלות, אבל אני אומר מראש, זה תלוי בנתוני התחלואה. ככל שהמצב יאפשר, אנחנו נחזור בהקדם לתוכנית הרמזור ולניהול שגרת קורונה. המטרה היא להוריד את רמת התחלואה, והמטרה היא בפירוש להציל חיים רבים בישראל. אין לנו את הפריבילגיה לדעת שהיינו יכולים למנוע תמותה נוספת, ולא עשינו זאת. זאת האחריות שלנו. כנציגי ציבור אנחנו חייבים לפעול עכשיו, ואני אומר לכם לפעול יחד למען כל אזרחי ישראל. A far cry from the internationally praised handling of the coronavirus outbreak in March, Israel is now going from its second general closure to 100% full lockdowns. As of 2 p.m. Friday, September 25, and until the Jewish holidays end October 10, all private businesses and the public sector will be closed, with the exception of essential services such as those in the food and medical industries. Both prayer spaces and demonstrations or protests will also be closed and limited to just 20 people outdoors, socially distanced, and less than 1,000 meters from their homes. The only exceptions to this as of now will be for Sunday night and Monday, where synagogues will be allowed to open for limited Yom Kippur services. Meanwhile, educational institutions will be closed. Public transportation will be reduced to the bare minimum. Hospitals have been asked to delay non-essential and elective procedures. Air travel will likely be canceled altogether, and all sports sectors will be shuttered except for official international games. But of course, the jury is still out on whether this is even close to the right move in defeating the COVID pandemic, the public already arguing against it. I think the government is, is using and deploying actions that there's no medical agreement that are necessary um, to combat the new infections, which is in a way kind of upsetting because I'm happy to cooperate with any measures that have a rationale behind it and I'm not convinced that this specifically does. I think that the government is completely dysfunctional. I mean, nothing, nothing that is related to the country, to the citizens in its, is in its um, priority. Um, Nobody is thinking about us. I really feel it right now. I mean, that we are not a factor in anything right now. And CEO of Hadassah Hospital, Professor Zev Rothstein, even suggests that an inquiry be opened into the government's handling of the crisis when it's over. Well, in fact, the lockdown was passed not by healthcare professionals, but by politicians. The outline for the new restrictions being drafted by the alternate coalition cabinet, led by Prime Minister Netanyahu, Defense Minister Gantz, and select other ministries. The coronavirus cabinet, however, which is supposedly in charge of leading the fight against the virus, was not involved at all. And those who oppose the recent measures include Ministry of Economy and Industry Amir Peretz, Bank of Israel Governor Amir Yaron, and Minister of Finance Israel Katz, who argues that the private sector was not supposed to close down, and that what's being proposed now is globally unprecedented with severe consequences for the economy, which is already suffering with an 11% unemployment rate. 
Even coronavirus czar Professor Oni Gamzu rallied against these new 100% public and private sector lockdowns, instead backing a 50% closure. Netanyahu, though, is sticking to his guns. The Israeli Ministry of Health is reporting over 6,800 overnight infections as of this morning, bringing the new active total to upwards of 57,000, at least 667 in serious condition, and the death toll now at 1,335. And now joining us with more on the 100% full lockdowns beginning tomorrow, international spokesperson for the Sheba Medical Center, Steve Waltz. Steve, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. All right, now the coronavirus cabinet was not behind this decision. So, you know, Steve, first off, people are obviously not happy about the lockdown. Uh, is it necessary at this time, in your opinion? Well, something has to be done. The question is, where do we go from here? Remember, after the first lockdown, uh, we came out of the lockdown a little bit too fast, and there hasn't been one country that's done a lockdown where they haven't had the beginning or into the second wave already. So here, if you do a lockdown, something has to be done. It has to be enforced. Question is, what type of lockdown? And I think we're going to go right down to the 2 o'clock deadline tomorrow to discover exactly what we're talking about here. But the bigger issue is, what do you do after three or four weeks? How do you come out of it without going into a third wave? Remember, we're going to go into the flu season right after the end uh -huh. of Sukkot. And then if you have another wave together with the flu season, then we're really in big, big trouble. Well, so how, how is the hospital, how has Sheba been doing with coronavirus? You know, are, are you receiving patients from the periphery? Are you turning patients away or at or near capacity? What, what's happening? So there's been a lot of disinformation out there. So here's where we are at this point. Uh, Sheba continues to operate relatively normally. Yes, we accepted patients from the periphery. They said we accepted like 25, more like 15. Uh, we continue to try and operate the hospital in a normal fashion for a very simple reason. During the first wave, a lot of people were afraid to come to the hospital and get their normal checkups and do their treatments, whether for cancer or for heart. And what happened was that when the summertime came, and we are now at the end of the summer, the hospital, and not just she, but most of the hospitals across Israel are full of regular sick patients because they didn't take care of themselves in the first wave. So if you lock the hospital down in the second wave and flood the hospitals with corona patients, it becomes a catch-22 situation where you are literally uh, you know, endangering the lives of people who have to have regular treatments on a regular well, and, basis in the hospital. Well, and what about cutting elective procedures or, or you know, non-essential procedures, as the health ministry is calling it? Well, the hospitals are trying not to get to that point. We may be forced to do that. Right now, we're trying to stay away from that. But I understand that all hospitals have a shortage of doctors and nurses. So the minute you have more corona patients, you're deploying them away from the regular hospital. We cannot be in two places at once, and we're not unique to that. Every hospital in Israel has this problem. The only advantage we have is that we're the largest hospital in the Middle East. But again, Sheba does suffer, like everyone else, from a shortage of doctors and nurses. All right, Steve Waltz, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Moving on, tourism in and out of Israel may be grinding to a halt, but elsewhere, things are starting to pick back up. Members of European Parliament demanding that something be done to support the 22 million jobs in the industry now at stake. Nittany Manson has the details. The whole world feeling right. the hurt. The European Commission is now reporting losses of up to 90% across tourism-related industries, including restaurants, hotels, tour operations, airlines, and long-distance trains. And this making for a total of roughly 2.4 million businesses and nearly 23 million jobs on the chopping block. That's also over 10% of the EU's gross domestic product. The only problem now, though, lies in creating a universal health and hygiene protocol for movement across the European Union. Members of the EU Tourism Task Force, 
issuing a statement on Wednesday, saying that as things are, even when travel is partially possible, the varied and constantly changing rules make it too difficult. There is good news, however. Things are starting to look up across the EU as coronavirus numbers are seemingly slow but steady on the decline in many areas, and opportunities to get the market back on track are starting to reopen. So according to the task force, all that the tourism industry apparently still needs is direct financial support, transparent criteria to access risk, coordinated travel restrictions, and hygiene and health protocols, and continued EU management towards sustainable tourism. And now as we pray for the day that we can get back into the skies, we can at least start planning an incredible experience abroad. And joining us with the details of some very special programs is Effie Gutman, the VP of Outgoing Experiences with Chavayat HaIsraelit, or the Israel Experience. Thank you so much for being with us. Good evening. Thank you. All right. So first of all, you know, what can you tell us about the Jewish experience uh, at, you know, and its activities? The Jewish experience is a brand of the Israel Experience. The Israel Experience is subsidiary of the Jewish Agency. Um, as its name implies, uh, we are producing experiences. We are producing Jewish experience on Jewish sites in Europe. And this is, you know, is this like a heritage thing? Is, how, how does that work? It is a heritage thing, but the idea is that your heritage is different than mine. It can be the same, but sure. mainly it will be different. And in that sense, we are designing experiences according to your needs, to your background, your heritage. And whenever it is possible, we're also trying to make background research on spot, on the, on the sites, or your family. And even if we are lucky enough to get into archives and get documents that belong to you or to your ancestors. So these are, so these are tailored trips, they sound like. And it's, not, it's not just a tour of the, of the Holocaust camp. Absolutely. We are not asking to people to join us. We are asking to people to come to us, and we will apply wow. whatever you need. What's the most unique thing about the Jewish experience? That you the most have? unique thing is that it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a custom-made. I mean, it is not a shelf program, but we are offering you to have your own experience. We are checking what exactly you need. By the way, we are also working with Third Age, and we are producing and taking into account that there are some people who have certain needs, also physical needs. And in that sense, we are designing, again, the, 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 the emphasis is designing. We are designing a product that you want to have, not that we want to give you, but what you want. How, how long are, are these typical trips and these tours? Well, it depends how much time you have. I mean, people coming, yeah. all of, people coming from Europe, to, from, from the States or from, South, or from South America to Europe, and some of them are staying 20 days, and some of them have only three days. I mean, if you'll come to Berlin, and you'll see Jewish sites, or you'll see on your own a, a background Jewish sites, we definitely will not uh, ignore the Unter der Lieden or, or, or the Tiergarten Park. But basically, we concentrate on two main areas of local uh, 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 Jewry prayer war time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to the Balkans as well as focusing on the, a Ladino-oriented Jewish background, as well as going to Poland and Hasidic areas or, or, or state of the say, as they say. So you guys are covering every aspect from every angle, and it's, it sounds absolutely incredible. I advise everybody who's watching right now, please check out the Jewish experience and see what they can do for you. Thank, thank you, you Thank much. you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Now, we've talked a lot about travel today, and for many, Jewish or not, international Chabad centers offer a perfect place for a rest stop when touring around the world. Chabad houses also offer popular lectures, classes, workshops, and more, all in line within the teachings of 18th century Jewish leader Baal Shem Tov. But now the movement is getting a spotlight like never before with the help of Hollywood producer Stephen Paul and Hollywood actor John Voigt. So joining me now with the details, I'm very excited to introduce Academy and Golden Globe Award winning actor John Voigt. John, thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to have you. It's my pleasure to be with you. All right, now, first off, you and your partner, Steve Paul, you're working on a new show that will be broadcast on JLTV. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's a, uh, you know the word for bringing? You know what it is? Oh, it's a gathering where people, uh, you know, uh, with people of a spiritual background, let's say, get together and they share their thoughts and inspirations and whatever uh, with each other and, 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 and a lot of humor and sometimes laughing and sometimes uh, dancing. And this... And, and, uh, yeah. 
And anyway, if you, you know the Chabad, from your introduction, I can tell you know who they are. They're fantastic people. And they always have, uh, you know, a way to help other people, regardless of race or creed. And, uh, and, and whenever you're with them, you're having a good time. They, ha they have a smile on their faces. And they, uh, and they th this, this idea of life, you know, to life, to life, to life, seems to be uh, a good description of, of uh, their energy and personality. They have tremendous a energy. And, and uh, they have a, a great depth of understanding of the wisdom of Judaism. So, in, so when you so in this program, going to get something. Well, so I was going to say, so in this program, Friends of Chabad, you're you're doing this. You're sitting down and you're discussing all these topics. Yes, there are four people in the show, just like you guys have a you line up sometimes. These are the four, and uh, uh, and it, it, the humor. You can see this a kind of joy and humor in it, yeah. and that's what the show brings. But also, as I say. Quite a lot of wisdom. So we say, have fun and be inspired. Enjoy the and, and join the friends of Habat. Wow. So I have to ask, you know, how did you get into this? And and yes, as you mentioned, that poster <laughs> it gives off this almost sitcommy vibe. But you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that it's not scripted. I think that'll be really interesting. But but again, well, you know, how did you, you get into this? You'll see. It's it's quite uh, it's um, it's really something. The chemistry between the four of us is. Uh, is very special. The reason why this show happened was because my partner said, we got to do a show on JLTV. We got to do something that's, you know, stimulating to the Jewish people and helpful. And I said, why don't we do something on the Chabad? What a great organization. Let's just find out where they get all this wonderful energy, you know, and, uh, and wisdom. Well, and and I understand so we did. And, and I said, you've got to meet these two fellas, Haim and Levy, because they're a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, and, and you'll enjoy them. And, and surely, when I introduced uh, Stephen to these two fellows, to Hyman Levy, he got along so beautifully with them. And, and Stephen fills in the show because he asks all this, the questions almost like a, 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 the little the children in uh, Passover when they ask the questions, the four <laughs> questions. He asks those obvious questions, and he gets all these wonderful wow. responses from the rabbis. Wow. All right. Well. I, I hate to I hate to end it here, but do you have a, maybe a special holiday message for all the viewers at home? We're just ahead of Yom Kippur, uh, and and for anybody who's supporting Chabad, etc. Well, I'm, I can say that that Chabad does so much good work that, and they depend on support from you know they're out there without a net in a way, and uh, so anything you do for Shabbat, for Chabad really translates to helping a lot of other people. So so I would say help them, but uh, also. You know, I wanted to just say a word about Israel at this time. Please. Israel is so important in the world. And, uh, and those people who want to know where, you know, how did it happen to me, I have to say, well, just, you know, I'm one of those people who looks at uh, the Bible and gets inspired, like many artists over the years, you know, uh, almost all the writers, the great writers are inspired by the Bible. When you look at this, the, uh, the words to Abraham, which began all of this, mm. when he talks about the land and he said, I, I want you to leave your father's house, the house, house of your birth, birthplace and, and go where I will show you and you will be a blessing uh, to all, you know, uh, this great nation that you will, you will provide. And that's what this nation is to me. And uh, I take, I, I say, that I'm a Zionist. Obviously, anybody who believes that is a Zionist. And we have a president of the United States now who understands all of this and has been a tremendous blessing to, uh, to Israel. And so I know that our nation is blessed because of this. As, as God said, you know, those who bless you, I will bless. So uh, we're receiving the blessings of your nation because of our president. John, thank you so much for being with us. It's an absolute pleasure. Everybody at home, please check out Friends of Chabad on JLTV. Thank you so much again. Yes, have some fun and be inspired. Thank you. All right, moving on. Lockdown or no lockdown, Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement, is coming. And normally thousands of Israelis and Jews from around the world arrive at the Holy Temple's Western Wall Complex in Jerusalem to write down prayers and personal requests and stuff them into the cracks between the stones. Well, this year, you probably won't make it to the wall or even to Jerusalem, but your prayers still might. 
The Jewish Agency for Israel has now announced a global campaign to gather as many prayers as possible and place them at the wall according to tradition. Jewish Agency emissaries all around the world will be stationed in wait, receiving notes and passing them on. Agency Chair Isaac Herzog saying that as an organization whose mission it is to strengthen global Jewry and its relationship with Israel, we thought it would be fitting to facilitate this important act during the high holiday season. Of course, you can also now submit your prayers digitally and in multiple languages by visiting the link that you see on screen, my.jewishagency.org forward slash kotel. So how else will the new closures affect our upcoming holidays? How are you supposed to celebrate the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur now? Joining us to answer is Rabbi Dov Lippmann, Senior Manager of Community Outreach from Honest Reporting and former Knesset member for the Yeshatid Party. Rabbi Lippmann, thank you so much for being with us. Sure. All right, now let's start with a normal year. You know, how are we supposed to celebrate Yom Kippur? Usually, as you said, Yom Kippur is a day where uh, overwhelming majority of Israelis would go to synagogue. They'd spend a significant part of the day in prayer. It's a day that's a solemn day of asking God for atonement and very spiritual in nature. Uh, there's a Yizkor prayer in the middle of the day where we say prayer for those who have passed away, a memorial prayer, and really a day which, which brings all of Israel together in this spiritual focus. Of course, there's always the element of the highways being empty, and therefore sure. certainly children who are not religious use them for riding bikes and the like, but really generally in normal years is a day where most of Israel would be focused on synagogue and spirituality. So, okay, as you mentioned, aside from riding your bike from, you know, the north all the way to the south on the empty highways, you know, what are some of the ways that you can honor this day without violating lockdown restrictions? So first of all, let's remember that it is a fast day as well. And uh, I think the numbers are in the 90% range of Jewish Israelis that fast on this day. And that's certainly an element uh, of the day. But the fast is not supposed to be a fast just for itself. It's supposed to move one towards atonement, towards repentance. So there's no doubt, this is what I've been telling lots of people who are just shocked that they're not going to be able to spend this day in synagogue, in an air-conditioned synagogue. Remember, it's supposed to be about 98 degrees so the idea of praying outside can work for certain hours, but not throughout the whole day. Right. It can be used for self-reflection, for reading, certainly Bible study, uh, reading about what used to happen in the temple on this day. There's a whole service that was done, and there are many, many sources that are available for that. I advise people to go online, print things out, and definitely spend the day in spiritual pursuits, but you could do so in the comfort of your home, in air conditioning, and still have it be a very meaningful day. And one more important point, Aaron, and that is the highlight, the most important part of the service in the synagogue is usually confession. When you mm -hmm. actually confess to God privately, quietly, things that you've done wrong as you try to commit yourself to a, a better next year, that's something which everyone can certainly do from their home as well. You do not need a, a large uh, prayer service and other people in order to do that. So there's still plenty that people can do on their own in the comfort of their air-conditioned homes, but it does require preparation and it does require require going through various resources before the holiday to be ready for it. All right, Rabbi Lippmann, sounds like we have a lot to do this year, uh, and we'll be doing it from home. Gmar Khatima Tova, and Tzom Kal, may you have a, an easy fast. Thank you so much. To you as well, and to all the viewers. All right, now let's take a look at the weather forecast. If you guessed that this weekend would be clear, sunny, and warm, you guessed right. And let me tell you what you've won. Lows tonight of around 71 Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius. Then over the weekend, you'll be enjoying the lockdown with more clear skies and a lovely daytime high of about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. And now before we go, let's take a look at what's going viral in Israel. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is he still asleep? Oh my god, he's still asleep. How do you do that? Cats, man. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't trust cats. They can sleep through anything. All right, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.48 shekels to the American dollar and 2.6 shekels to the Canadian dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. 
I'm Aaron Porras, and ahead of Yom Kippur, Gmar Chatima Tova, or have a good final sealing. Tzom Kal, may you have an easy fast, and thank you so much for watching.